Let Our Lady of the Angels Church of the Parish of the Ascension of the Lord rise as we prepare to celebrate the fifth Sunday in ordinary time in the year of our Lord, 2020.
chapel and a new altar to God. We also rejoice in the beautiful stained glass windows that once again adore our sacred space. Therefore, let us humbly beseech the Lord that he will be pleased to dwell among us with his grace. And by his power to bless this water he has created, with which we are to be sprinkled as a sign of repentance and a remembrance of baptism. And by which the walls of the new chapel will be purified and dedicated to his honor, worship, and service. But first, let us remember that we ourselves, gathered as one in faith and charity, make up the living church placed in the world sign and witness of the love with which God cares for all people. O oh God, through whom every creature comes forth into the light of life, you accompany all people with such great love that not only do you nourish them with fatherly care, but you mercifully cleanse them of their sins with the dew of charity and constantly lead them back to Christ the head. For in your merciful plan, you establish that those who descend as sinners into the sacred waters to die with Christ should rise free from guilt and be made members, heirs with him to an eternal reward. Sanctify, therefore, with your blessing this water you have created that sprinkled on us these windows and the walls of our new chapel and altar may be assigned the cleansing waters of salvation in which we have been washed in Christ and made a temple of your spirit. Grant that with all our brothers and sisters who will celebrate the divine mysteries in this chapel, we may come at last to the heavenly Jerusalem, to Christ, all their friends.
May God, the Father of mercy, dwell in this house of prayer. And by the grace of the Holy Spirit, cleanse us who are the temple where he dwells.
If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall be comfort you like midday. The word of the Lord.
humanity. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Provided the template for the building was 
professionally accomplished by the last architectural firm here in South Korea. While the hard work of constructing the building in a timely fashion was overseen and brought to fruition by the Pine Tree Corporation of Kittery. It is a spectacular project and a wonderful cooperative effort that brings us here today to dedicate the new building and to bless the chapel, which will provide a place for daily worship and quiet at the heart of this complex, close to the heart of Jesus. So as we come together, it is very appropriate that we lift up in our prayer in this Mass of Thanksgiving all who have worked so diligently to plan and guide this project, all those of the parish, the friends of the parish, who through incredible generosity have made it possible for this community to build this beautiful facility, a completion of a project to create a new center of faith for the community of Our Lady of the Angels in South Burlington and for the parish of the Ascension. It is a singular achievement and a wonderful grace, and it is a blessing for us to be here together. As is ever the case, the scripture we hear today gives us a direction for our lives as we dedicate this building. I think it also shows us the meaning of our celebration today and the way in which God invites us to use what you have built for his honor and gospel passage that we just heard read is taken from the Sermon on the Mount. Early in Matthew's gospel, he paints a picture for us of Jesus with his disciples gathered on the side of a mountain, where Jesus tells the gathered assembly what his mission is all about and how they are called to share in that mission. Jesus tells them what he expects them. In a way, he is like a coach, encouraging his team for the big game. But the game here is life itself. And Jesus is sending his disciples out, not just for three or four periods of play, or even nine innings in a few weeks, but for life. He gives the disciples a mission for a living life. Of course, in passing on the story, we should see ourselves in that group of disciples. And we listen to what Jesus tells them because we know that he is speaking to us. And what is the mission he gives? You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He calls those who follow him to be salt and light not only out there in some distant land, but right here in your own community. Both of these realities, salt and light, had a great importance in the world where Jesus lived. Salt was an essential substance for life. As it is for us, of course, it was used for flavor, for flavor food. But more importantly, and what makes it essential is that before electricity and refrigeration, it was also used to preserve food. Meat was able to be kept for longer periods of time by putting a thin layer of salt over it. Light had somewhat the same function it has today. It was intended to push back the darkness. In the ancient world, however, it was a lot darker than it is today. I'm always struck when I go downstairs in the evening to put my coffee cup in the sink. We have all those blue lights in the house casting their eerie glow in the night, showing you around. And then the ambient light from the street lights outside tempering the darkness at night. In the ancient times, there was no need for room darkening shades. When it was dark, it was dark. The people listening to Jesus would have known Without a candle or a lamp at night, they were pretty helpless. So why did Jesus choose these two things to give a direction to his disciples? Salt and light. Think about it. Could it be 
because they are both for something else. Neither of them takes an interest for itself in what it is doing. The purpose of both salt and light is not for salt or light, but it is other centered. Salt and light serve those who use them. Our mission as disciples of Jesus, as his followers, is to make a difference for others. We bring them the joy and peace we find in the gospel and its guide for our lives. It is in that way that we are salt. The light set on a lampstand gives light to all in the house, says Jesus. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. Now at this particular point and in this particular Gospel, in Jesus' ministry, he doesn't really list the ways or the good deeds he refers to there which he calls his followers to be light for the world. For us this afternoon, however, Isaiah, the prophet that you heard from in the first reading, does provide a list of the things a community might do to be light in the darkness and solve the world. Isaiah is encouraging a community which is broken. It's reconstructing itself in exile. Far from its home in its own land. But Isaiah's program for that community is an outline of what makes a community which sees its purpose as bringing praise to God. Isaiah himself tells us that such a community will be light in the darkness. And what will make it a community of light? It will be one which is sharing its goods with others. One which cares for the needy and the homeless. One which fosters loyalty and faithfulness among its members. And one which treasures the humanity in the other members of the parish community. The message of the scripture for us today is that by being light and salt, in concrete ways, we bring the love of God others. In hospitality, we invite people to know the love of God. In our wish to serve others and be less concerned with our own interests and needs, we show how our world can be brighter, how we can bring light to the world. What you have here in your new building provides the place where the gospel can come alive. Here, you can be salt here at church, in this sacred place, you gather for the Eucharist. Here is the source of all that Jesus calls us to be. We believe that in the gathering as a community, in the scripture, and most importantly, in the sacred body and blood of Christ we receive in the Eucharist, Jesus is present for us. When we receive Holy it is truly Jesus we receive. And our prayer when we receive him is that we be in communion with him, that we become like him. His presence with us gives us direction for our lives. As St. Augustine taught us, and as we heard in our opening hymn, we become what we receive. In our prayer, we ask that we might be able to be like Christ, the one we receive, that we might be able to give of ourselves or others, just as he did. And we do not have to go far to bring our faith to others. This new facility provides the spaces where that is possible. We do it by the sharing of our faith and the meaning that that brings to our lives with our young, which takes place in the rooms of the parish center. It is done in the hospitality these spaces provide 
to those who bring a child for baptism or bring a loved one for funeral. It is there in the welcome we give to families preparing for the sacraments of initiation for their children. We do it in the suppers, which will be held here, gathering the community and strengthening relationships in the communion of the parish, as well as doing good for those whom those gatherings assist. This is what it means to be the salt and light that Jesus calls us to be. As he brings us home in this sacred space, we reach out, inviting others to share the goodness of his love, that Jesus has shared with us. My friends, as we give thanks this day for this new facility, let us also pray through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God, Mother of the Church, and Our Lady of the Angels, that through her intercession, we might have the grace to be the light of Christ in this beautiful place and this community. May the new facility built with the generosity of this community, be a place where the light of Christ brings hope to those who come here seeking light in their lives. that they 
find shelter, food, and jobs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all here present, who help the poor, the hungry, and the sick, that they find joy and renewal in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have grown weak or infirmed, that we might see God's power in their fragility and experience a new revelation of God's love for them, for those ill and suffering from the flu, for those on our prayer line, for those in our prayer book, and for those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. For the deceased and their families, and for Frederick McGinault and Brian Sincotter, who died last week, and for the repose of the soul of Mary Meager, for whom this Mass is being offered, and we pray to the Lord. Lord, God of mercy and wisdom, as we go forth from this church, help us to spread your light and goodness in our community and throughout our world. May our hands extend your grace to every person that we meet. We ask for this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the blessing of the altar. With great joy, my dear brothers and sisters, our community gathers to bless this altar. Let us join in this rite with attentive spirit, asking God to look kindly on the church's offering that we placed on this altar, and make of his people an eternal offering to himself. Blessed are you, O God, who accepted the sacrifice of your, of your Christ offered on the altar of the cross for the redemption of the human race, and who, with the Father's love, gather your people at the table of the Lord to celebrate his memorial. Therefore, look, O Lord, upon this altar, which we have prepared for the celebration of your mysteries. Let it be the center of our praise and thanksgiving. Let it be the altar where we offer in mystery the sacrifice of Christ. Let it be the table where we break the bread of life and drink from the cup of unity. Let it be the fountain from which flows an unending stream of salvation. So that as we come to Christ, the living stone, we may grow in him into a holy temple and offer on the altar of our heart the sacrifice of a life open and dispensed in peace pleasing and acceptable to the praise of your Lord. Blessed be God forever.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them free. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your people. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts to be brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
Savior's command and for by the divine teaching, we dare to say.
God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one child. Grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Immediately following this Mass, everybody is invited to join us in the hall. If you don't know where it is, just walk over to the Mass. You can turn uh, to the right. Uh, the Bishop and I are going to do a quick uh, change of vestments, and then we'll be joining you. We have a very brief blessing in the hall, and then our really wonderful uh, reception and celebration of the Holy The Lord be with you. big hallway here. Welcome everybody. Come on in. Delighted to have everybody here with us. Come on in and join us. Enjoy this brand new beautiful hall. It's wonderful to have so many people here and to have, have so many people have stayed and to be a part of this. We want everyone to be a part of this blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And your spirit. After much prayer, work, and sacrifice by so many members of the parish of the Ascension of the Lord community, we gather now to bless this new parish hall for Our Lady of the Angels Church. This building will allow for many kinds of parish gatherings and activities, all meant to give witness to our faith in Christ. It is our hope that this parish hall will be a place where we can both experience for ourselves and extend to others genuine Christian hospitality, thus enabling our community to grow in diversity and unity as we come to know one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord. In these and in many other ways, we pray this day that the word of God may also echo throughout and from within its walls, which we will bless in just a few moments. We have a few people here who have been 
uh, really integral in making sure that this hall has gone up and looks the way that it does. I now invite Bill Green to come forward. Bill, as you know, is our business coordinator, and he has also been the project chair of this entire building. Thank you, Father Moore, and thank you, Bishop Daly. I'd, I'd first like to thank the stained glass window team, Steve Trebol, Mo Cody, Bob Burns, and Ken Krebs. Ken couldn't be here tonight. He's, he's in Florida on a vacation, uh, but he, he wanted to say hello and, and thank you very much. And when we first started thinking about this space and what it would be in, in it, we, we thought it would be very nice if we could have a chapel. And with that thought, we thought, gee whiz, it'd be really nice if we had some stained glass in the new chapel. And that started an, an adventure uh, for the stained glass, which resulted in getting the stained glass installed in the church as well. So we're very happy and thank them very much for that. I'd like to thank CCS, uh, the fundraising company that helped us uh, kick off our building campaign. Sarah Emerson is here tonight from CCS. Thank you so much for coming tonight, Sarah. I'd like to thank LaSalle Architect. Uh, Sarah Hurahan is here tonight with her family. Uh, Michael LaSalle couldn't be here, but Sarah was the lead architect, and thank you so much for being here tonight, Sarah. Uh, Clint Gendro is here tonight with Pine Brook Construction, uh, with, with a couple of his construction people, uh, Chris and, and Eric, and I thank you very much for being here tonight, and thank you so much for building this beautiful hall for us in chapel. I'd like to thank the building committee and especially my co-chairperson, John DiStefano. A, a great effort performed by all. We made it through many hurdles throughout the project. I'd like to thank David Toomey, the diocese CFO. With David's help, it was our finance committee. We were able to figure out a way to make this project move forward. I'd like to thank Jimmy Soma and Dennis Lafernier, the head of the diocese facilities. Jimmy has retired this past Friday but it was with their keen eye that shepherded us through this building process, and I thank them very much. A special thank you to Father Mower. Father has been a steady rock to us all throughout this process. And I'd like to thank everybody involved in making this edition possible, and especially tonight's hospitality team and the Parish Life Commission. Thank you all very much. As Bill mentioned, the architects for this building were Lassell Architects here in South Berwick. Sarah Hurahan has been the face of this entire project through many, many different meetings and gatherings and overseeing this. Sarah, could you come up just for a moment and just share with us? Sure. Good evening. I'm Sarah Hurahan from Lassell Architects. Um, on behalf of Lassell Architects, we want to congratulate you all on this space, and we hope that you have many years of memories here um, together as a community. This project really has been a dream to work on, starting with the building committee who really dedicated a lot of time working with us to meet your needs and goals for this project. And, um, and with the building group, the team that we've had with Pinebrook and working with Bill and Father Scott and um, many people from the diocese. And it really has been, everybody has been very respectful of each other and this project just came together very nicely. So we, uh, we feel very grateful that we had the opportunity to work on this and we hope you enjoy your space. We sat down and did a lot of dreaming and Sarah got it all on paper and then you wonder how does it move from paper into the real being. And we thank Pinebrook a corporation for doing that, and the face of that is Clint Jandro, who is here tonight. Clint, would you share with us for a moment? Good evening. Uh, I may be the face, but I didn't do it alone. I want to recognize Eric Cooper, who is the project superintendent. Eric watched every nut, bolt, screw, nail go into this building, and and he he deserves much of the credit. Uh, Father Moeller asked me if this was a particularly stressful project, and 
I kind of chuckled. I was like, this has been a dream come true. Every meeting with the owner, the architect, and, and, and us contractors sitting around the table was actually a very nice meeting. Common goals. I wish I could be so fortunate for every project to go that way. But, um, and I, I say project. It's, it's very nice to see tonight that this is no longer a project. This is your parish hall, and congratulations. As Bill mentioned, this was sort of the swan song for Jimmy Soma, who has set, been such an important and vital part of our diocese. He was down here at every meeting, but also with him is uh, our new head of all that department, and that's Dennis Lafrenia. Dennis, would you just come up and share with us a moment? Thank you very much, Father. Thank you, Bishop. It was a, a real dream to be part of this team, and uh, Jimmy, unfortunately, couldn't be with us tonight. But uh, I'm so excited for the community and the many years of use uh, ahead of us with this new facility. It's really going to be fantastic for the parish. Thank you very much. Now let's again put ourselves in the presence of our Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us listen to the words of the evangelist St. Luke as recorded in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With praise and thanksgiving, let us ask God from whom all graces flow and through whom all things are accomplished to bless this new parish hall, all who have made it possible, and all who use it and care for it in the years to come. And in response to our prayers, I ask you to respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the communities of faith rooted in this part of the diocese and formed into one parish, under the paternal name of the ascension of the Lord, may every parishioner strive to reflect the unity and communion that we celebrate each week through the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all parishioners, may we live as missionary disciples who evangelize others by our words and deeds and so build up the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all whose prayers and contributions help to make this building a reality, may their generous sacrifices and offerings be a reminder of our Christian call to be stewards of all our God-given blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all who worked on the design and construction of this building, May their craftsmanship be a reminder of God's invitation to share in his creative power and will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will gather in this parish hall, may their activities always build up the body of Christ, and so give glory and praise to our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all of our prayers and hopes for this magnificent edifice, we offer them to the Lord as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of mercy and truth, you sent your only Son to be our Savior and Lord, to call us together as church and to carry on the work of salvation. We entreat your kindness and ask you to bless our parish community and all who will use this parish hall, to be renewed in mind, enkindled in spirit, and revitalized in body. May all who come here know the presence of Christ, experience 
the joy of his friendship and grow in imitation of his merciful love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And we should ask a blessing on our food as well, right? So let's pray together. Bless us, O Lord, and these our gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let's eat. <laughs>